Good to have you with us on this Wednesday edition of Ed Schultz News and Commentary from the nation's capital center for American progress. All right, so I have to start with this because I, I feel like this is a serious I told you so. Several years ago, when I was doing the cable show, I talked about Detroit, Michigan, and the effort to privatize and the effort to go after every service the city had because the city was broke. The state legislature in Michigan had shortchanged the city. There was money that was supposed to go to Detroit that never showed up. And slowly but surely, all the services dwindled until they could privatize it all. In fact, they shut off the water. And folks, when they shut off the water, it's pretty much over. This isn't just for Detroit, Michigan. This is an an ideology and a business plan that has been pushed by Governor Snyder in Michigan for a number of years, and now we have Flint. And you have to be living underneath a rock to not know what's going on in Flint, Michigan. This is a serious issue. It is a failure of the United States. Uh, Candidate Bernie Sanders has called for the resignation of the governor of Michigan. But he is the problem, and we need to be very clear about this. This is a Republican problem. This was created by Republicans. This was created by their effort to squeeze workers, for their effort to squeeze communities, for their effort to privatize as much as they possibly can. So now, without oversight, without regulation, we've got contaminated water and we have a city that has had to have the National Guard come in, give them water, because we have purification problems. You know what this is? This is a third world country. That's what it is. Right here in America. And it's all because of Republican policies that, uh, number one, have attacked workers, have attacked organized labor, have said that they are the problem, all the way across the board. They starved Detroit because they wanted to hurt the workers. They starved the state of Michigan because they wanted to privatize and help the wealthy. So this is a rare soundbite that I'm going to play for you. This is a capitulation by the governor of Michigan, Governor Rick Snyder, saying that he's finally sorry that all of this shit didn't work. To begin, I'd like to address the people of Flint. Your families face a crisis, a crisis you did not create and could not have prevented. To you, the people of Flint, I say tonight, as I have before, I am sorry and I will fix it. No citizen of this great state should endure this kind of catastrophe. Government failed you, federal, state, and local leaders, by breaking the trust you placed in us. I'm sorry most of all that I let you down. You deserve better. You deserve accountability. Well, I'd agree with about 90% of that. But government was stripped away. It's not that government failed. Government stripped away. They knocked off the voting rights in Michigan. Uh, They did all kinds of things to pass laws to make it harder to vote. And, of course, they manipulated things. All the corporate boys came in. Snyder had absolutely no history in public service. And now you know the end game. So he's sorry. He's sorry. This is... As I look you right in the eye in this camera, this is a Republican problem. The Democrats didn't cause this. The Democrats would have never allowed this deregulation to take place and for this to spiral out of control. With that, let me tell you about the mounting attacks that unions have had to put up with on a number of different levels. Number one, they've had to put up with it at the election level at the state legislative level, and at the Supreme Court. There's a new report out there from Democracy Initiative Education Fund, Democracy at a Crossroads, no doubt, how the 1% is silencing our voices. I advise all of you to read it if you care about the future of this country. It examines how the attacks on unions and the right to organize assaults on the right to vote and the dismantling of campaign finance laws are not isolated incidents. Instead, these events are inextricably and directly linked as parts of a systematic effort to shift power from the majority of Americans to a tiny minority of the very rich and the most powerful corporate interests. I've been screaming about the attack on labor on labor for years. I've documented it many times on many media platforms. It is real. 
The report written with the support of every voice center and the Communication Workers of America examines how everyday American voices in the political arena are being silenced through unprecedented attacks on three pillars of our democracy. Mounting attacks on unions and the power of workers in the legislatures across this country, in the Congress, and now in the Supreme Court. And the story in the Supreme Court, of course, is what's going on with the teachers from California. They are trying to destroy the Democratic base as best they possibly can, organizing at any level and ramrodding through everything they can by cash-whipping politicians. How do we reverse it? Larry Hanley is a great representative of workers in this country. He's president of the Amalgamated Transit Union. He has been on the line with workers since the day he joined, and that is a number of decades. Mr. Hanley, good to have you with us. Good to be with you, Ed. You bet. What have you experienced in your career when it comes to the silencing of voices and all of the things that would support what has come out in this report? Oh, my God. Well, well, with, without a doubt, and I think this is clear to everybody listening, there has been a huge uh, attack on, on labor, on working people. I, I don't think I would narrow it to the Republican Party. I think you expanded it well when you talked about corporations and wealthy people really uh, sponsoring all this. This is really an expression of extreme greed and the notion that the all-powerful rich have to be even more powerful than they are. But, you know, throughout my life, I've, I've seen the labor movement uh, lose rights. Now they're attacking uh, our ability to collect dues from people who use the services of the union but choose not to be members. That's that, that's the one that's in front of the Supreme Court right now. That, yeah. That, yeah, that was yeah. just heard the other day, a decision coming in June. That would be fundamental. I mean, that but, would be yeah, no but, question. But think about Michigan and Wisconsin, and think about the fact that there was a fight back, but not enough. The fight back was not sufficient to stop the attacks on democracy. And I think in large measure it's because average people have not perceived the depth of this attack um, how many things were going to happen, how many bad things were going to happen if we didn't fight back. So I really believe that even some right-wing friends of mine, by the way, uh, will not argue the point anymore after Flint, Michigan. I think Flint, Michigan tells the American public just how far this will go if we don't fight back and, and fight back in concert. And the fact of the matter is that the same people who sponsored the, the poisoning of Flint are the people that are sponsoring the end of the labor movement in America, and the labor movement is the institution that can lead this fight back. There's no question about it. Well said. Restricting voting rights. Between 2008 and 2015, at least 22 states have imposed carefully targeted voter ID laws that disproportionately affect working Americans, communities of color, seniors, and young people. Uh, States have cut back on early voting, election day registration, and other reforms that would increase turnout. These efforts are concentrated in communities with diverse electorates. How do you combat that if you can't win the legislative power? What your thoughts as an organizer? We have to we have to go out and win over the hearts and minds of the public and uh, continue to explain to people that that you know. And I want to point out a dangerous thing that Hillary Clinton did the other night in respect to this too. You know, the whole notion is, you know, we had to do what we did in Michigan because we just can't afford government anymore. We can't afford it because we're taxpayers. You know, 40 years ago when I was in school, we were taught citizenship. Now we're taught we're not citizens, we're taxpayers. The important connection between me and my government is how much tax I pay, not how much I contribute to society. And that has to change. We have to change the mindset in America that has been given to us by by corporations. And the point I just want to make about what Hillary Clinton has done to Bernie Sanders, and my union has not endorsed either one of them at this point, Um, but what she did by trying to wave the argument out there that we can't have decent health care because who's going to pay for it, that is the Tea Party argument, the corporate argument, the Wall Street argument, and that says there's not enough to go around, which we all know is nonsense. There's plenty of money to go around in this country, the richest country on earth, if we'd only share it. You know, that's a very profound point you're making, because that was the point she was making, and nobody really picked up on it. All of a sudden, we can't afford what the people want? I find that really hard to believe. Universal health care in this country polls in the majority. In fact, it was the platform of the Democratic Party platform in 2008 at the convention in Denver. We've wanted this for years upon years. 
I want to go to this soundbite of uh, Senator Sanders. Cut 11 on our list today. He's at a rally in Iowa. He talks about the crux of the problem. Goldman Sachs is part of the revolving door politics of Washington. Over the last several decades, Goldman Sachs, a corrupt major financial institutions had two secretary of state a secretary of the treasury this same financial institution provides huge amounts of money in campaign contributions and in speaking fees to unnamed candidates what do you make of that mr hanley i mean it doesn't well, that cut doesn't that does that cut right to the core of what this country's problem is well ed if uh, the way you um go around and uh, campaign to become president is first to extract huge speaking fees from wall street and you know these are fees in the hundreds of thousands of dollars to speak for a half an hour or 40 minutes and if that's what you do um for a year and a half prior to running for president with everybody knowing you're going to run for president um, I would say that's an attempt at bribery. Um, we would not allow these corporations to directly give that money to a politician, but because they, they can attract uh, people to, to, to hear their, them speak, we say it's okay. So there's no question that any politician who parades around giving speeches for three or $400,000 a speech is being bribed. They are being, uh, they are being handled by... Uh, all the people that, that are giving us places like Flint, Michigan. Larry Handley, president of the Amalgamated Transit Union. Always great to visit. A great fighter for workers in this country. Always willing to speak up. I appreciate it, Larry. Thanks so much. Thank you, Ed. You bet. We'll do it again. This is Ed Schultz News and Commentary, brought to you by Communication Workers of America, Alliance for American Manufacturing, BioGreen Clean, and the iSave team. So she's out there again mumbling, stumbling, fumbling, and it's still Sarah Palin. Eric Bullard, a senior fellow at Media Matters, joins us to talk about what's the upside of this. Stay with us. Hey folks, you've heard me talk about Bio Green Clean. I'm going to show you right now on my airplane just how tough this is. I want you to keep in mind, chemical-free, 100% plant-derived, biodegradable. It is the safest cleaner that you can get, and it's the most effective. Go to our website, wegotit.com, or go to biogreenclean.com, www.biogreenclean.com, and order today. It's time to continue our conversation about mechanical insulation. Mechanical insulation is for the piping systems in our nation's commercial and industrial facilities. Facility owners are burning up billions of dollars through the lack of mechanical insulation on these piping systems. Call the iSave team. Insulation saves America valuable energy, and this team of energy conservation specialists is shovel-ready to save you money. Visit iSaveTeam.org to have a specialist give your plant an energy audit. We perpetuate a culture of crime all the way from Wall Street right down to the Main Street in our hometowns. It's worse than it has been since FDR took control of the problem and said we can't count on industry taking care of the American labor. They probably have already engaged in some type of criminal cover-up. And the law prohibits the government from even doing anything about it. Catch America's lawyer Mike Papantonio on YouTube at youtube.com slash TV. We're going to give them hell. I I just want to thank Sarah and Todd. I just really amazing people. This is a woman that from day one, I said, if I ever do this, I have to get her support. She feels it. She understands it better than anybody. And Sarah, on behalf of myself, my family and the country, I want to thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, wait a minute. I'm in this country. Hold on a second. Somebody needs to explain to me what is amazing about Sarah Palin. What I guess what's amazing is that she is still on the stage. I mean, this 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 is just this is porn for idiots is what this is. So here's Sarah endorsing Donald Trump and I, I you know what I'm totally disconnected from their thought process of how anybody running for office would think that she would lend anything positive to anybody's campaign here it is are you ready for a commander in chief you ready for a commander in chief who 
will let our warriors do their job and go kick ISIS ass! Ready for someone who will secure our borders to secure our jobs and to secure our homes. Ready to make America great again. Are you ready to stump for Trump? I'm here to support the next president of the United States, Donald Trump. And we're not done. I'm in it because just last week we're watching our sailors suffer and be humiliated on a world stage at the hands of Iranian captors in violation of international law because a weak-kneed capitulator-in-chief has decided that America will lead from behind. And he, who would negotiate deals, uh, kind of like with the skills of a community organizer, maybe organizing a neighborhood tea, <laughs> yeah, well, he deciding that, no, America would apologize and uh, as part of the deal... All right, uh, okay, we all get it. We, we, we all get it. Let's go to Eric Bullard, Senior Fellow of Media Matters, MediaMatters.org. Eric, good to have you with us. Hey, Ed, how are you? Well, I'm doing great. I, I guess I, I actually thought that Sarah Palin was uh, all gone. Yeah. That 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 this would never that she's gone from Fox. I don't know what her platform is right now or, or where it is, but all of a sudden she's uh, she's resurfaced with the front runner of the Republicans. And the story this day is that Trump says that she may play a role in his administration if he's elected. Break it down for us. After afterwards on CNN, there was talk that she might want to be secre- energy secretary or something. It's <laughs> funny. I was just looking at my. Um, Archives. One uh, a year ago this month is when she left Fox, and I did a piece, Sarah Palin, and the demise of the Tea Party media. Looking back at Glenn Beck and that, you know that guy on CNBC who sort of created the whole Tea Party movement, and how you know Glenn is gone, and 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 now Sarah's gone. And and like you said, I thought th- I thought this was kind of over, but it's interesting. It, it, it's her resurrection doesn't really have anything to do with the Tea Party. I was looking at the conservative press and even, you know, National Review and Weekly Standard. They're, they are not happy about any of this. They think she's a clown. They think she's making a mockery of the conservative movement, which, of course, she's been doing for years. Uh, so even the conservative press looks at this, you know, supposedly, you know, serious writers over there, and they realize this thing has gone totally over the cliff. They understand the electoral implications for a Trump nomination. They understand. I want look if if Trump gets the nomination. I said this last August. Mm-hmm. I said we might have the first time where the actual party goes and finds a third party candidate just to kind of hang on to their principles. I wouldn't be surprised if you know. A. I wouldn't be surprised if Trump's the nominee, and B. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a movement to find a third party candidate to run against him and it's going to be a movement run by led by you know the national review and the weekly standard and the so-called republican establishment that's that's how dire so, their situation so as you see that uh, uh eric bullard with the sarah ned schultz news and commentary as you see that uh why do they feel that way about trump what well, is is trump not conservative enough yes, is, do yes, they think he's, know, does he think he's not qualified or yeah. what Look, you know, he's dabbled in democratic politics. You know, he's for eminent domain. He's supported, you know, Planned Parenthood, they say in the past. You know, he's been sort of a wishy-washy New York City Republican. He does, he has not been a strong defender of any of the, you know, sort of far-right radical initiatives of the conservative movement. And the Tea Party thought they were winning this national conversation with. So they see an embrace of Trump as backsliding in terms of the principles, and they're kind of completely chagrined that it, it appears, based on the polling, the Republican yeah. voters aren't interested in those principles. They're interested in short-term sort of bravado. So there'll be no admission that they are wrong on issues to the point where they can't win a general election, and they'll put their flag in the ground and stand with it. I think they are. I think they are. And and look, you know, tr- you know, people say, "Wow, why would Trump want Sarah Palin?" I mean, she was so crazy in that gibberish thing yesterday. But look, he's always about the short term, and the short term is, you know, he wants to be Cruz in Iowa. And I think he probably will. And he's sucking out all the oxygen, and, and Cruz was getting a little momentum. If, if Trump wins Iowa, it's over. 
I mean, it is just over. Uh, well, he's got a thirty-point you know, lead in New Hampshire. He's got a thirty-point lead in South Carolina. He's got a thirty-point lead everywhere. Yeah. I was the only close state right now. Yeah, even I think even if Ted Cruz and I told Alan Combs this last night, even if Ted Cruz wins Iowa, I yeah. think Trump's going to run the table. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think Iowa's going to make that much of a difference. We've seen Santorum, we've seen Huckabee right. when Iowa did nothing for him. Here's Cruz responding to the Palin endorsement of Trump. I love Sarah Palin. Uh, Sarah Palin is fantastic. Without her friendship and support, I wouldn't be in the Senate today. If you're looking for someone who's a deal maker, who will capitulate even more to the Democrats, who will give in to Chuck Schumer and Harry Reid and Nancy Pelosi, then perhaps Donald Trump is your man. Cruz playing it safe there, I'd say. Yeah, he has to. He has to because he understands, you know, again, we're talking, you know, if you look at this Iowa caucus, I mean, some of these candidates are going to get like eight, 9,000 votes. I mean, we're talking a very small pool of people yeah. that actually show up and vote. So, you know, are there 15,000 people in Iowa that love Sarah Palin? Absolutely. So he's got to sort of play it safe. Um, and look, she, and he's right, she, you know, she did back his sort of renegade campaign years ago for the Senate. So it is sort of a, um, you know, it is sort of an insult to him that she's picking Trump. But my gosh, on, on a large national stage, uh, I mean, you, <laughs> I was tweeting this this morning. I mean, the, if you look at unfavorable ratings among people in the news, I'm not joking. Sarah Palin and, and Donald Trump have the highest <laughs> unfavorable rating of literally any two political figures mm-hmm. in this country. So, and, and now they're sort of teaming they're sort of teaming together. I guess in that sense it's a perfect match. Well, with that, does the Palin endorsement do anything in Iowa for Trump? I, I mean, I guess I really did realize she was such a buzzsaw and such such a draw in Iowa, but whatever. What do you think? Yeah, I, I think it can, and I think it can get him uh, across the finish line, and it might get him a few thousand votes. I, I, but again, he's dominating every day in Iowa. You know, Cruz, that was going to be sort of his place to, to make a stand. Uh, I think it's slipping away from him, and I think Trump has a couple more crazy things to do between now and next uh, week from Sunday night for in the caucus. But again, what's interesting now is, is the buyer's remorse that's setting in within the conservative media. Uh, particularly non-Fox. Fox has no idea what to do with Trump. Some like him, some don't. There's no guiding principle. They don't love the guy the way they usually rally around every Republican front runner. They certainly don't have the guts to try to take him down. Uh, but the, in terms of you know the print and the online conservative media, they they see what's going on, and they and it's only January, and they've got to get to next November. And it's just looking it's just looking like a nightmare right now. Eric Bollert, always good to visit. Appreciate your time. Thanks so much. Talk to you soon. Senior fellow at Media Matters, Eric Bollert. More right after this on Ed Schultz News and Co. From the steel mills of Pennsylvania to the auto factories of Michigan to the modern makers movement, manufacturing makes our nation great. I'm Scott Paul, president of the Alliance for American Manufacturing. We bring business and labor together to advocate for policies that everyone can agree on. Together, we can strengthen manufacturing and create good-paying American jobs. Help us keep it made in America. There's been a lot made of the dust-up between Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton when it comes to health care and guns and taxes and whatnot, Wall Street, should I say. Uh, It's not all uh, peaches and cream over on the right in Iowa. Terry Branstad, the governor of Iowa, has been a big proponent. He's a righty, but he's been a big proponent of renewable fuels for years, or he'd have never been elected governor. I mean, they're about ethanol. They're about biodiesel. And they are clearly 
uh, looking at alternative ways to support their economy when it comes down to diversification of energy. So during a renewable fuel summit in Iowa on Tuesday, this is what Terry Branstad said about Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz is ahead right now, but what we're doing is we're trying to educate the people of Iowa. He is the biggest opponent of renewable fuels. He is heavily financed by big oil. And I believe that would be a big mistake for Iowa to support him. And I know he's ahead in the polls, but the only poll that counts is the one they take on caucus night. Ted Cruz responding to the Iowa governor. It is no surprise uh, that the establishment is in full panic mode. The Washington cartel lives on cronyism. It lives on making deals. It lives on picking winners and losers and is supporting corporate welfare. And we will see, like the empire strikes back, the, the establishment will strike back because they don't want an end to the cronyism and the gravy train from Washington. Okay, cronyism, gravy train, corporate welfare. Let me ask Senator Cruz this, and I know he'll never respond in any way, shape, or form, but someone should who has access to him. Ask him how he feels about corporations parking their money offshore. Is that corporate welfare? you would goddamn right it is. There's no question it is. And do you think it's right uh, for corporations not to pay their fair share? Now, if Ted Cruz wants to change Washington and be fair to all Americans, the middle class, and every worker that's out there, and if he wants to be constitutionally solid, he needs to make sure that corporations don't get away by shaking down the Senate and the House and getting laws passed that are going to make it easy for them to park their money offshore and rob the Treasury and not pay their fair share. So when he talks about corporate welfare, you go right to the bullseye of that story, and that is the pinnacle of it all. This is Ed Schultz News and Commentary, brought to you by Communication Workers of America, Alliance for American Manufacturing, BioGreen Clean, and the iSave team. We're back tomorrow.